The capital of Nigeria, Lagos, is home to a remarkable yet starkly contrasting community known as Makoko, a floating slum that vividly embodies both the resilience of the human spirit and the dire consequences of urban poverty. In this unique aquatic settlement, you can find everything – homes, marketplaces, workshops, schools, bars and even brothels – all perched precariously over the Lagos Lagoon. Beneath the surface of Makoko's waterborne vibrancy lies a harsher truth. The waters, a vital life source, are tainted with sewage and pollution. This environmental crisis is a daily battle for the residents, who face the constant threat of waterborne diseases. The lack of adequate sanitation facilities means that much of the waste and sewage from the densely populated settlement ends up directly in the lagoon, compounding the challenges of maintaining a healthy living environment. Malaria is the most common disease, especially in the rainy season. There are also outbreaks of cholera, typhoid fever and any disease transmitted by contaminated water. Poverty in Makoko is pervasive and profound. Yet amidst these hardships, the spirit of Makoko endures, presenting a deep and complex life narrative in one of Africa's most dynamic urban landscapes. Let us journey to Makoko and explore how people live in the largest floating slum in the world. Makoko, often referred to as the Venice of Africa, is a unique place, defined by its intricate network of wooden homes perched on stilts and an array of canoes serving as the primary mode of transportation. It presents a stark contrast to the urban sprawl of Lagos, the famous Nigerian megacity populated by about 21 million people. The origins of Makoko can be traced back to the late 19th century. It was initially founded as a fishing village by the Egan people from neighbouring West African countries. At this time, Lagos itself was less than one million people. The city of Lagos has undergone rapid growth due to several intertwined factors that have propelled it to become one of Africa's most populous and economically significant cities. The city's position as Nigeria's financial heart has attracted businesses and industries from within and outside the country, making it a hub for economic activities. Its port, which is among the largest in Africa, serves as a critical node for international trade and logistics, further enhancing its appeal to businesses. Moreover, the allure of better job prospects and higher living standards in Lagos, compared to many other parts of Nigeria and Africa itself, has led to a massive influx of people from rural areas and smaller towns, as well as from neighbouring countries. This migration has continuously driven the city's population growth, creating a mixed urban culture, but also straining infrastructure and housing. The rapid development and urbanisation have led to a significant housing crisis, with demand far outstripping supply. For many low-income families and individuals, affordable housing options are scarce. Makoko provides a more financially accessible living option for those who cannot afford the high cost of living in more developed parts of Lagos. While the oil and finance industries have buoyed a few thousand Lagosians into stratospheric wealth, one-fifth of the city's 21 million residents are either living in or at risk of poverty. The residents of Makoko represent the city's lowest socio-economic tier. Makoko's location is both a boon and a bane. Situated on the fringes of the Lagos Lagoon, it offers its residents direct access to water-based resources, crucial for their fishing-dominated economy. However, this proximity to water also subjects the community to environmental hazards, including flooding and pollution, which are exacerbated by the city's expanding industrial footprint. The area's topography, characterised by waterlogged terrain and makeshift structures that hover above the water's surface, underscores the residents' adaptive strategies to their challenging living conditions. This adaptation is evident in the architectural ingenuity of stilt-supported homes and community buildings, constructed from materials that are often scavenged or repurposed, reflecting a profound resilience in the face of adversity. 
The precise population figures for Makoko are challenging to determine due to its nature as a slum and the lack of formal census data. Estimates vary widely, but it is often reported that the population could be anywhere from tens of thousands to approximately 100,000 people or more. The prime inhabitants are the Egan people, who are originally from the neighbouring Republic of Benin. A significant number of Yoruba residents, as well as migrants from various parts of Nigeria and other West African countries, are also present. This melting pot of cultures has created a multilingual community where Egan, Yoruba and French are commonly spoken alongside English. Religious practices, predominantly Christian and Muslim, coexist with traditional African beliefs. This blend of faiths and practices contributes to the social cohesion of Makoko. The population of Makoko continues to grow as more people move to the area, drawn by its proximity to economic opportunities in Lagos, despite the challenging living conditions. However, the settlement's organic growth and lack of formal urban planning have led to significant challenges. Makoko is not recognised by the Nigerian government and is absent from any maps. This absence renders the task of tracking land ownership, planning infrastructure development, optimising community services, preparing for emergencies and supporting sustainable development efforts exceedingly difficult. The dense population and limited land space have resulted in overcrowded living conditions, with families often cramped into small, poorly ventilated spaces. This congestion, combined with inadequate sanitation facilities and a reliance on the lagoon for both livelihood and waste disposal, has exacerbated environmental pollution. The waterways are now threatened by contamination from domestic waste, human waste and industrial runoff, posing serious health risks to residents and undermining the traditional fishing economy. There is no longer any fish in the dark waters near the houses fishermen are sailing deeper into the sea to be able to fish. Despite its growth, Makoko has remained largely autonomous, developing its own set of rules and governance structures outside the formal regulatory frameworks of Lagos. This autonomy has allowed the community to preserve its cultural heritage and adapt to the economic and environmental challenges unique to its setting. At the same time, however, it has made it a thorn in the eyes of the government and a hindrance to the modern image that Lagos aspires to project. This perception has led to numerous conflicts over the years, with the government making several attempts to evict residents and demolish homes, citing environmental concerns and the need for urban redevelopment. One of the most significant confrontations occurred in 2012 when the Lagos state government issued a 72-hour eviction notice to the residents of Makoko. These actions were justified by the government as necessary measures to reclaim the waterfront for development projects aimed at transforming Lagos into a megacity. The government came with the police and soldiers to evacuate the community and destroy their homes. The people of Makoko tried to resist and a community leader, Timothy Hunpoyanwa, was shot dead by the police which led the authorities to pause the eviction process. By then, 30,000 people had been rendered homeless. This sparked local and international outcry over the violation of human rights and the lack of adequate notice or compensation. To this day, the residents of Makoko are living in constant fear that one day, out of nowhere, their homes may be completely destroyed. They can't rely on the government for anything. In fact, when a large fire broke out in Makoko a few years ago, which many believe was not an accident, residents reported that the government intentionally delayed the emergency units that were supposed to combat the fire. Due to the wooden construction of the houses and the way all houses are connected, the fire caused significant damage. The homes in Makoko are predominantly built on stilts, a method adapted to the waterlogged conditions of the area. This construction technique not only mitigates the risks posed by flooding, but also optimizes the limited available space, allowing for the dense settlement patterns observed in the community. Wooden piles sourced from the locally available mangrove wood are driven deep into the soft, muddy bottom of the lagoon. 
These piles serve as the main support for the houses, with their durability and resistance to rot being key attributes that make mangrove wood an ideal material for construction in such a challenging environment. The depth to which these piles are submerged varies depending on the proximity to the shore and the water's depth, but the principle remains the same – to provide a stable base that can withstand the lagoon's tidal movements and occasional turbulence. Above these foundational stilts, the floor structure is laid out, often using a combination of wooden planks and bamboo. The flexibility and availability of these materials contribute to their widespread use, offering a balance between durability and cost-effectiveness. The layout of homes in Makoko is closely tied to the social and familial structures of the community. Houses are often compact, with space efficiently utilised to accommodate extended family units. Living spaces are multifunctional, serving as areas for cooking and sleeping. The close-knit arrangement of homes fosters a strong sense of community and mutual support among residents, an essential aspect of life in Makoko. Wooden bridges and walkways also connect homes to each other and to the main pathways of the community. Not all of Makoko is above water. There is a large part of it which is on land. The land-based area of Makoko is marked by a dense maze of narrow streets and alleys, flanked by buildings made from a variety of materials, ranging from wood and metal sheets to concrete blocks. Over the years, the house construction methods in Makoko have evolved, incorporating both traditional techniques and modern innovations. Some newer structures feature improvements such as concrete foundations for increased stability and the incorporation of plastic bottles and other non-biodegradable materials for environmental sustainability. Men, women and sometimes even children set out early in the morning in their canoes, casting nets and lines into the lagoon's murky waters. The catch of the day often comprising a variety of fish and sometimes shellfish, is not just for personal consumption, but also serves as the main source of income for many families. The fish are sold either directly from the boats or at the floating markets that are a hive of activity within the community. These markets, bustling with traders and buyers, underscore the economic vibrancy that thrives even in such a challenging environment. Beyond fishing, Makoko's residents engage in a range of other economic activities. Women play a crucial role in the community's economy, often seen managing stalls at the marketplaces or involved in processing the fish catch through smoking or drying. This not only adds value to the raw fish, but also ensures that surplus catch can be preserved for sale on days when the fish are less abundant. The marketplaces themselves are a microcosm of Makoko's economy offering everything from daily necessities to locally produced goods. Here, one can find vendors selling vegetables, household items and traditional crafts, their goods spread out on floating platforms or canoes. The ingenuity of Makoko's residents is evident in their adaptation to the limited space and resources. Boat building and repair workshops dot the water's edge, catering to the community's essential need for reliable transportation. These workshops not only service the local community, but are also known to supply canoes to other parts of Lagos, showcasing the craftsmanship and skill of Makoko's boat builders. There are canoes resupplying homes with firewood. There are also canoes supplying homes with water. All the fresh water consumed in Makoko comes either from boreholes or taps on the mainland. The Makoko community, seeing that there was no way of getting anything from the authorities, organised in 2009 to set up schools, electricity, some drinking water points and a small clinic. A number of foreign development agencies have also helped to build or improve things in Makoko. The Makoko Floating School was a pioneering architectural project that garnered international attention for its innovative approach to education and sustainability in the challenging environment of Makoko. Designed by architect Kunle Adeyemi and his team at NLA Works in collaboration with the local community, the school was conceived as a solution to the pressing issues of flooding and the lack of educational infrastructure in Makoko. This floating structure was not just a school, but a symbol of hope and resilience.
embodying the potential for sustainable urban development in coastal and flood-prone areas. Constructed primarily from locally sourced materials such as bamboo and timber and buoyed by recycled plastic barrels, the Makoko Floating School was designed to adapt to the rising and falling tides of the Lagos Lagoon. Its triangular A-frame structure, spanning two stories, provided stability and resistance to the area's frequent flooding, while its open-air design facilitated natural ventilation and lighting, creating a conducive learning environment. The school could accommodate up to 100 students, offering primary education to the children of Makoko, many of whom had limited access to formal schooling. The school quickly became more than an educational facility. It served as a community centre and a symbol of what innovative, context-sensitive design could achieve in environments like Makoko. It represented a forward-thinking approach to the challenges faced by similar communities worldwide, illustrating how architecture and community planning could work hand-in-hand -hand with nature rather than against it. Unfortunately, in 2016, the school faced structural issues that led to its collapse, a setback that sparked discussions about the sustainability and durability of such innovative designs. Despite this, the legacy of the floating school continues and there are several schools that provide basic education to the children of Makoko. The one big challenge that Makoko hasn't managed to combat properly is waste disposal. There is a lot of plastic waste in the water. The lack of a plan to deal with waste is not unique to Makoko. It is something that is ever present in many African cities where the government has failed. Life in Makoko is full of challenges. The lack of formal employment opportunities means that many residents must rely on informal sector activities to make ends meet. Brothels in Makoko highlight the intersection of poverty, gender and economic drivers behind such trades. The presence of brothels within the community showcases the complex socio-economic realities that drive individuals toward this kind of work. For some, involvement in this is seen as one of the few viable economic options in an environment where employment opportunities are scarce and the demands of survival are pressing. These brothels also serve as bars and entertainment places where people also socialize. This aspect of Makoko's social landscape raises important questions about economic desperation, autonomy, and the broader implications for community health and safety. The issue of unprotected coupling and its repercussions, including young women facing early pregnancy, is a significant concern. This situation is exacerbated by a combination of factors, including limited access to sexual health education, scarcity of contraception, and deeply rooted social and economic pressures that often leave young women particularly vulnerable. Although the people of Makoko can't rely on the government and law enforcement, the community hasn't succumbed to anarchy and crime. Presiding over various parts of the waterfront are local chiefs, known as bales. The bales are the linchpins of governance within Makoko, serving not just as leaders, but as mediators, protectors and guides for their people. Their authority is derived from a combination of traditional legitimacy and the respect accorded to them by community members. This respect is not merely a matter of custom. It is earned through the Bala's deep engagement with the welfare of their community, their understanding of its challenges and their efforts to advocate for its needs. For example, Emmanuel Shimada, who is the Bali of a Dogbo village in Makoko, is responsible for constructing a primary school and a Baptist church. The Balas are deeply involved in the day-to-day -day welfare of their community. They oversee the allocation of resources, the management of communal spaces, and the distribution of aid. Their intimate knowledge of the community's needs allows them to target assistance where it is most needed whether it is supporting vulnerable families, facilitating access to medical care, or organizing community cleanup efforts to improve sanitation and health. One of the primary responsibilities of the Bales is to mediate disputes within the community. In an environment where formal legal mechanisms are often inaccessible or inadequate, the Bales' role in conflict resolution is crucial. 
they provide a forum for airing grievances, mediating disputes, and ensuring that justice is served according to the community's norms and values. This function not only maintains social harmony, but also reinforces the community's autonomy and resilience. Thanks to these leaders, crimes are rare in Makoko. There are strict rules for those who commit crimes against the people. For example, if someone is caught stealing, he is placed on a canoe and showcased across the entire village so that everyone learns he is a thief. After that, he is expelled from the community. The unique way of life and the floating architecture of Makoko has gained a large interest from tourists and visitors who want to explore its waterways and stilt houses. Tourists come to Makoko seeking an authentic experience, eager to witness firsthand the realities of life in a floating slum. Guided tours, often led by local residents, provide a glimpse into the daily lives of Makoko's inhabitants, showcasing the community's adaptability to its aquatic environment. These tours can offer valuable insights into the challenges faced by the community, including issues related to environmental sustainability, education and health. For many visitors, the experience is eye-opening, challenging preconceived notions of poverty and resilience. From Makoko's perspective, tourism presents both opportunities and challenges. On the one hand, it offers the potential for economic benefits. Tours can provide a source of income for local guides and contribute to the local economy through the purchase of crafts, food and other goods. This economic injection can be significant for a community where resources are scarce and opportunities for income generation are limited. On the other hand, the influx of tourists into Makoko raises concerns about the commodification of poverty and the potential for voyeurism. The ethical considerations of slum tourism are a subject of debate, with critics arguing that it risks exploiting the community's hardships for entertainment. There is a fine line between fostering understanding and empathy among visitors and reducing the complex realities of life in Makoko to a spectacle. This unique settlement, floating on the waters of the Lagos Lagoon, encapsulates the complexities of survival and adaptation in one of Africa's most dynamic urban landscapes. Tell us what you think about Makoko in the comments below. In the spirit of exploring these remarkable human stories, we invite you to extend your journey with us to another corner of the world where the sea is the foundation of life. Watch our documentary on the Bajau people, often known as the Sea Nomads. The link is in the top pinned comment.